Okay, so uh, hi Filippo, it's nice to be here talking to you at the conf Cordex conference. This is the fourth time now we are gathering all of the regional climate modelers and um, you have been involved in this business for a long time. So uh, how, what do you, how do you see this conference here in Beijing now in 2019? Well, this is, uh, I would say, the third very big uh, Cordex conference. It's always, to me, it's kind of incredible that we can put together so many people. We started regional modeling uh, 30 years ago. There were only very few people back then. Uh, the field got a little bit of time, some difficulties to grow, but now, especially after Cordex was implemented, it kind of exploded. So I'm very happy to see this, and I hope it will continue in the future. Okay, it certainly will. And uh, I, I know that you have been thinking a lot about the future also, about uh, what Cordex can evolve into and what are things that are coming up. So do you, what are your perspectives? Do you, what are the big things that are going to happen with, within the regional climate modeling community? Well, the main one is the transition to this convection permitting modeling. I think this is the next step that our community has to take uh, to go you know, to scales of one kilometer or maybe two kilometers. Uh, but this will not be easy. It's not just uh, increasing the resolution of the models or you know, changing some parameters. The models have to be changed a lot. They have to be tested. So this will take some time. It will be also a big technological challenge because you produce a lot of data, you need a lot of computing time, <clears throat> so it will not be easy. The other area where I see a lot of development is the development of these uh, coupled models at the regional scale. Uh, now there are a few groups uh, that are actually developing these uh, very complex uh, coupled regional models with ocean, land, uh, uh, atmosphere, biosphere, and uh, chemistry. Uh, and also how to use these models uh, and how to handle them will be a big technological challenge. Okay, that sounds very interesting. And I, from your talk in the, in the session a few minutes ago, you also talked about these coupled model systems, that you also want to have people in, in the models. And I, I was intrigued by that. What, what do you really mean by that? Well, I actually think this is the next big challenge in modeling in general, how to put humans, real humans, in the models. Now the human activities are treated as four things mostly, you know, land use change, um, aerosol emissions. These are all taken from inventories or from scenarios or something like this. But we know that people react to climate react to environmental stresses, especially in some regions of the world, like the tropics, you know, Africa, South America, Central America, and so on. And I think uh, humans are part of the system. They're not outside the system. So we have to actually put them into these models. And I think regional models are the perfect tools to start doing this and eventually expand this also to the global models. So this is the next challenge, I think. Okay, so that sounds very interesting to put also the people into the models. One thing... Well, moving around, actually. I, I really mean having people moving from one grid box to the next and uh, emitting greenhouse gases and doing their things. I think this is the big challenge. Sounds very interesting. We also talked about the people, also the users of this information at, at, at your, in your talk. And you said it, it's really important that we engage even more with users. And uh, how do you see that come about? It's, it's quite difficult also to get users sometimes to be really interested in climate science. Uh, this is very difficult, actually. Uh, we have to do it more, but I think we need uh, probably a new breed of scientists. Um, I didn't have to get into this very much in my talk, but I think that we need to have people who can talk to both the climate scientists and the stakeholders. Now this communication is not so easy because we speak different languages, uh, we have different uh, ideas in mind of what we can or cannot do. And so I think that there's, we need to develop some new young scientists that act as interface between these two communities. Um, and I think for a young guy to get uh, involved in this type of activity can be actually very exciting and very useful for the future. And what are your main expectations on the rest of the conference now? Well, the conferences, the previous ones, looks very interesting. There's a very rich uh, program. I'm looking forward to seeing all these new talks, especially from the young guys. You know, I've been around a long time and I've given many talks, but I really want to hear from the next generation of uh, regional modelers and the new things that are coming up. And it's, again, very interesting and we'll see what happens. Okay, thank you very much, Filippo. Thank you.